So all of a sudden, that which is united with itself has decided to transform themselves into a matrix of sensual awareness out of which they can bring forth children, duplicates of themselves, so that they're not alone. I mean, it's the only way we can explain it. There may be higher reasons for it all. But we look at them as divine parents, and we can look into the into the life of our own parents to understand something of the mind of God. And they desired children. They wanted not to be alone. They wanted in their full age to enter into their rest and like us, sit on the back porch and have the kids come up and hang out. So the only way, the only way they could um, figure out how to do that is the way that they did it. And so she decided, all right, I'll go down and you stay here and I'll go down into the universe and I will become the negative force. You stay above and you remain in the positive force. And he, metaphorically now, see he's not the father until she becomes the mother. Only then do they break in half and now does the divine feminine principle descend into matter. And the divine masculine principle remains above in that incomprehensible realm where the divine dwells. And he then metaphorically represents the higher mind of the universe itself. Now, how can we know anything about that unless something informed us about it? Because all we are is, is, is just matter. So she descends, she becomes creation itself. She is a tree of life to them who lay hold upon her. And she descends into, she becomes the Big Bang. She becomes the expanding universe. She becomes the descent of divine consciousness. As she descends, she is always bringing the idea of the Father with her because she is coming down. She is coming down and all of a sudden the sun, the solar system in which we dwell, all of a sudden begins to take shape and these planets begin to form. And this is God the Father and the Mother just creating of themselves a universe in which they can descend and have babies, have children, bring forth life. And so finally, the planet Earth is formed. And who is it but our Divine Mother herself? She's forming herself. And throughout all the chemical interchanges of geological time, the Son, who is now metaphorically the Father, because He's always above, is now involved in this divine state of sexual embrace with the earth. And the two of them, the interchange of the light and, and the elements of the earth, bing, bing, the first um, amino acids appear, the first sparks of life appear in the form of the DNA molecule. And the molecule is in the absolute image of the oracle, the tree of life. And through this process now of unfolding evolution, life is rooting in the, in, in, the, in the substance of the planet because the Divine Mother now is springing forth life. She is life. She is everything that we can behold, breathe, think of, drink. She's everything. And in the process of time, in their image, the first Proto-human life appears on the planet. It makes no difference to me where this happened. We'll have a clearer understanding of this, whether it happened in Africa, whether it happened independently in all of the continents together. Either way, I praise God, it makes no difference where it happened. And, but it is out of this proto-human form 
whether it came from apes or whether it came just from itself, its own creative, followed its own um, evolutionary path, the first stirrings of divine intellect began. So again, all of human evolution begins as a relationship between the within and the without. And so all the rest is uh, scientific history. We begin to see from that point on that humans are now emerging out of the primal order of life with the very nature of God within. <laughs>